Hello, this is Dr. Mike Cochran again with uh, Ratio Scale Prioritization Methods. This is the second of two methods that we'll be covering in this uh, course, and we'll be talking today about cumulative voting. What is cumulative voting? Well, it's sometimes referred to as the 100 coins method, and you'll see exactly why we refer to it that way as we walk through the example. It's got a long history. Uh, it's useful for um, elections or allocating people for a number of positions. Uh, for example, if you're going to elect um, uh, people to represent a company on a company board or a committee, it's not as widely used as the analytic hierarchy process for software requirements, but it is used for that purpose. Uh, and the technique is simply involves um, giving someone uh, or a group of people a hypothetical sum of points or coins that they can then allocate among elements to be prioritized. It does generate relative values, which is what we want for the prioritization, uh, but it can also generate a zero value, unlike AHP. AHP can give you a, a very small numerical value relative to the others, but it can't actually generate a zero. <clears throat> Some of the advantages are that uh, it does, in fact, generate ratio data, which uh, ideally we are after uh, in prioritization. And you can see that it's really easy to understand and apply, so people uh, can readily adapt to it and use it. But some of the disadvantages are that um, if you have a lot of items to prioritize or to allocate, um, some elements can get overlooked. This is not the case with AHP, where because of the pairwise structure of AHP, you have to compare every item with every other item. Uh, it could conceivably be gamed. You can game the system, um, as you can see, by withholding allocations or recognizing that um, you, know, you can apply it, uh, uh, give more of your coins to one thing than another thing. That's more difficult to do with AHP because it forces you then to look um, compare on a, on a very much more granular level. And also, um, as with AHP, it becomes kind of unworkable and intractable when you're dealing with a really large number of requirements. So let's get into this. How does uh, the cumulative voting method actually work? Well, to do that, we'll go to our spreadsheet where I have set up already uh, a simple spreadsheet that's going to allocate um, the same seven gaps that we used when we were um, doing the AHP. And let me go ahead and, and um, I'll sort these uh, so that they're uh, basically uh, in ascending order. Uh, so now we've got gaps one through seven sorted in, in that order. Um, and you can see that I've got several um, custom cells here. We've got the items to be prioritized. We've got the spaces where we can put the coins. Um, in this yellow cell right here, we've got a conditional statement, an if statement, that basically says that if we've not allocated enough coins, it's going to give us this warning that says there's an insufficient allocation. Uh, if we have too many coins, more than 100, it'll give us a warning that says we've got an excess allocation. And once we've got all the coins allocated, it'll give us a green light that says we've got all the coins allocated. This bottom yellow cell is simply the sum of those. Um, we've got instructions over here on this right side that says um, if we have an insufficient allocation, we should allocate an additional number of coins. And it's just simply, again, a formula where we're using if statements. If this uh, cell value is less than 100, then it gives us uh, a return of uh, 100 minus that number, which tells you how many additional coins you have to allocate. And if it's greater than 100, then it basically says uh, that value minus 100 to tell you how many fewer coins you should allocate. So let's go ahead and, and start uh, working our way through this. Let's say that we want to give uh, gap number one, the first item to be prioritized, 20 coins. All right, so you can see that we've got our 20, uh, and it gives you the sum in the bottom. Let's give gap number two, uh, 32. So now we've allocated 52 coins, and it says we still need to allocate an additional 48 coins. So let's say that gap number three, the consensus is 12 coins. So we still have 36 coins to allocate. We'll give gap four, nine. 
So now we've got to allocate 27 coins among the remaining three gaps. So let's um, give gap 5 18. We still have 9 to allocate, so we'll give gap 6 4. And that leaves 5 coins left to allocate, so obviously we have to give gap 5 or gap 7 5 coins. And voila, we have 100 coins allocated. And our green light is up here. All the coins are allocated, so we have zero coins left to allocate. Well, how, how can we use this? Um, well, let's do another sort. We'll highlight this table. We'll go up here and do a, uh, a custom sort. And we'll basically sort on column C this time which are the actual number of coins. And what I want to do is sort them from largest to smallest, and you'll see why in a second. So now we have uh, the highest gap. Gap 2 has 32 coins. Gap 1 has 20. Gap 5, 18, and so on down to gap 6, which is our lowest one. In this column, what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically um, cumulatively add all these. So I'm going to make um, that first one... Uh, the same as gap 2, which has the largest number of points. And then in the next uh, cell down, I'm going to put the equal sign, and I'm going to say uh, equals that cell plus the next cell. So that now adds gaps, the scores from gaps 2 and 1 together to get 52. And I'll just copy this down all the way to here. So you can see now we have a cumulative ranking or a cumulative um, totals, running total, of the points that have been allocated. So if I um, scroll down to this uh, chart that I have set up here, you can see how we can apply or interpret these scores. Notice now that we've got um, gap 2 there with the 32 points, and the blue uh, columns show the relative values of each of the gaps that we gave and the red columns show then the cumulative value. So as we did with the AHP you can see that um, we've got a value of 70 here for the first three gaps. So 70 percent of the value that we've allocated uh, now lies in gaps 2, 1, and 5. And up here, you know, we can see that the total is equal to uh, a value of 82 and so forth, all the way on up to our, our total of 100 points. So the nice thing about this is you can see you can expand this spreadsheet to accommodate any number of, of cells. But if you had, say, 100 things to prioritize and you only had 100 coins, that really wouldn't be very valuable, would it? Uh, you'd have to do some multiple of 100. You could allocate um, 500 coins. Um, you could allocate 1,000 coins among those. But then you begin to see that uh, it becomes kind of unwieldy when you get up to that, uh, that level. But the nice thing about this is that uh, it does give you ratio data because you can say that um, when you divide um, 32 by, um, say, uh, 9, uh, that ratio is going to tell you how much greater gap 2 is than gap 4. So again, a very simple way of uh, generating ratio data and prioritizing. Um, you can give this spreadsheet to people who are participating in a prioritization exercise, um, or you can have people do it collectively as a group, uh, with you facilitating uh, and then populating the spreadsheet. So again, um, a nice way of um, of doing this kind of a, um, a prioritization and one that's uh, fairly easy for people to understand. So next time what we'll be doing is introducing you to some ordinal prioritization methods uh, and some that uh, I find very useful and have used um, on numerous occasions. But as always uh, if you've got questions about any of these um, prioritization methods or any question at all just give me a, a shout uh, at my email which is value function at gmail.com.